Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I request our director, Mrs. Nandini Sahai, to kindly escort Mrs. Aruna Roy and Mr. Nikhil Day to the dais. Welcome to this public lecture on the challenge of fighting corruption and redressing grievances organized by the International Centre Goa. This lecture, as many of you know, is part of the series of programs initiated by the International Centre Goa. Before we begin with the talk, may I kindly request Mr. Dattaraj Salgaonkar, the Life Trustee of International Centre, to make the introductory remarks. This is Aruna Roy, Nikhil Day, Nandini, Mr. Kalap, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to warmly welcome all of you today evening to this uh, series of lectures we've been conducting at the International Centre, which I hope all of you all are enjoying and learning from it. The series on anti-corruption and good governance. In fact, based on, I, I mean, we should not be taking the credit, but I think one of the pressures on the government to pass the Lokpal Bill in Goa was the series of lectures and interactions I may say the International Center conducted. Many of you uh, know Aruna Roy very well, so there's no need for me to introduce her. Nandini will do the honors later. But for me, she is one of our icons. She stands for finding solutions to our system. She and Nikhil Day, of course, both of them together. Her campaign to bring transparency into India, into Indian bureaucracy, she was part of the system and to bring transparency. That's what we want. We want to know how the government functions, how the bureaucracy functions, what are the pluses, minuses, what are the injustices for. And I think she has worked within the system and she's found how to get solutions. She has not discarded the system. She has not gone into anarchist mode. And I really compliment both Nikhil Day and Aruna Roy for whatever they have done. And once again, I warmly welcome them and I hand over to Nandini. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thurgaonkar. A very good evening to all of you and a warm welcome for this lecture on the challenge of fighting corruption and redressing grievances. It is my proud privilege to welcome eminent RTI activists Aruna Roy and Nikhil Day, who very kindly accepted our invitation and took time out from their extremely busy schedules to be here with us today. Thank you, Aruna Ji, and thank you, Nikhil. A little brief introduction, though she, they don't need an introduction, but just a brief. Aruna Roy is a social and political activist. She worked in the Indian Administrative Service from 1968 to 1975. She resigned in order to devote her time to social work and social reform. She joined the Social Work and Research Center in Thelonia, Rajasthan. She then moved to Dev Dungri, Raj Saman District, Rajasthan in 1987, and along with Shankar Singh, Nikhil Day, and many others, helped to form the Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangatan, known as NKSS. Aruna is a prominent member of many campaigns. She is one of the founders of the Movement for Right to Information in India. The RTI movement and campaign was instrumental in getting us a strong Right to Information Act in the year 2005. In 2000, she was awarded the Raman Magasese Award for Community Leadership. She is currently a member of the Central Government's National Advisory Council, from where she played a key role in incorporating strong citizens' entitlement in the recently enacted Right to Information and National Rural Employment Guarantee Acts. Aruna Roy is also a member of the National Campaign for People's Right to Information, National Employment Guarantee Council, NAPM, PUCL, and many and similar campaigns. Nikhil Day was educated in India and the USA and got his degree in law from the University of Delhi. After working briefly with Khedut Mazdoor Chetna Sangatan in Madhya Pradesh, he joined Aruna Roy and Shankar Singh in 1987 to go to Dev Dungri in Rajsaman district in Rajasthan where along with many others, they helped found the Bazdur Kisan Shakti Sangatam. 
He has been part of a collective process used by the MKSS and the national and state campaigns of people's organizations, taking responsibility for putting together people's drafts of the Right to Information and Employment Guarantee Bills. Both the Right to Information and the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, passed in 2005, have strong elements of people's entitlements which owe their origin to people's formulations during these campaigns. Since 1990, he has been a full-time worker of the MKSS and a part of the organization decision-making collective. In this capacity, he has been involved in struggles of the poor for justice, including grassroots struggles for land and the payment of minimum wages. He has also been a part of the organization's involvement in larger campaigns, mostly notably for the people's right to information and the right to work. I think I'll invite Mr. Nikhil Day now to start with this lecture series. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here. Thanks. Yeah, we'd like to keep um, it as, as short as possible so that we can discuss as much as possible, but it's a, it's a fairly comprehensive set of issues, so it will take a little bit of time. It's a great privilege to be here, and certainly, I think, amongst the more beautiful places that we ever get to speak in. We speak all over the place, all over the country, and sometimes all over the world. But I think rarely does one get a chance to speak in a place. We complain continuously of speaking in rooms that look just one like the other, no matter where you are. So I think this is just, just fantastic, and a time of day that's fantastic. It's also an occasion that I'd like to begin, actually, with saying that it's a, an occasion that we should celebrate. There are a few things that we celebrate in this country, but we should celebrate having RTI for six years. It's had lots and lots of problems. Um, it's had many shortcomings. It's had many of us complaining all the time about issues of implementation, problems with it. But it is something that we all value, and we have all contributed to and the greatest thing is continue to contribute to and therefore make it stronger and stronger. And um, maybe many people think it was a kind of a miracle given our political circumstances and governance circumstances that a law such as that came into being. But since then it's not been a miracle, since then it's just been sheer tenacity of people that's managed to protect it and allow it to move from one situation of strength to a greater situation of strength. And of course, even just yesterday, the Prime Minister spoke and spoke again with those same two things. Oh, yes, it's very good, but. And as soon as we hear the but, we, all of us know across the country what's going to come. And that worries us a lot. But it's, it's the but that we have to learn to keep fighting against and the and that we have to take forward. So uh, the, in all these ifs and buts. But anyway, the right to information is so today we move with, the, I think, from that celebration to a to another set of things that are challenging us right across the country, and a set of questions that right to information in many ways has given birth to, which is that we managed to get our foot in the door. We managed to, actually, one of the early right to information people, Prabhash Joshi, he used to say, not just foot in the door, he used to say, in that big, huge dock, you get your nail into a crack. Nothing more than that. And then you work at it, so that you learn to prize that entire rock apart. And so that much, because it, there wasn't even that much space. The truth is that. Maybe for many who were more affluent and more powerful, there was a lot of space. I know for the poor, there was no space within government. And I know more than anything else, RTI managed to get that space to get into the, those offices and to get a voice in. Now, going beyond that was certainly a question of, we have managed to start making the Indian government and governance transparent. We have started managing to open it up, the innards. Another thing in Biawar, when we were sitting on Dharna, uh, in 1996, one of the, a lawyer actually came to Aruna and then later came to the mic and said, Ki aap jo mang rahe ho, bahut achha mang rahe ho. Bahut achhi baat hai, soochna ke adhikar mang rahe ho, lekin kabhi nahi milega, bhool jao. So we said, kyun bhool jao? So he said, aap ek sadi gali vyavastha se mang rahe ho ki wo apni atma bhaar nikal ke 
दिखा दें कि मेरी आत्मा सड़ी हुई है तो बट द ट्रूथ इज दैट आर टी आई हैज मैनेज टू अलाउ अस टू एक्सट्रैक्ट ऑल द रॉट दैट इज इन साइड एंड एक्सपोज इट आउट साइड एंड देर फोर वी हैव स्टार्टेड मूविंग एंड नाउ इन आई वुड से फाइव ईयर्स लेटर वी हैव स्टार्टेड मूविंग टूवर्ड्स really trying to build a culture of transparency it's not there just moving you know in near that place where we have a culture of transparency but starting to look at not just an application but how our office should function why is it that you're asking a question at all whether we should get this or not why are your not information not out on the website or on the wall why are you not more transparent transparent in the way you function so what are the beginnings of a cultural transformation beginnings are being seen but transparency immediately brings up the questions that we are now facing in this country today which are questions of accountability and that is what brings us to this particular topic today of the challenge of fighting corruption it's not just corruption there are many other things but for today and the redress of grievances uh, both these issues to my mind are actually extremely difficult challenges it is true that rti in and of itself and by itself as soon as you place information in the public domain it has a huge impact you don't have to wait for another system people themselves what we found actually what in the early again in the early 90s before we had the right to information when we informally accessed or illegally accessed information and took it out in public hearings in the size of this kind of square uh or rectangle placed it in the village chopal in front of everyone with a mic we found that it completely transformed the atmosphere because people themselves armed with that information changed the whole atmosphere but that takes you so far again and no further yes it some firs are lodged yes some people return money yes some action is taken yes there is some encouragement but finally you want that the course of the law the law should take its own course so it's brought all of us collectively and then as you keep pushing for action to be taken you come to where we were actually in september 2010 all of us in the ncpri a point where you say that people are being killed all over the place because people are not leaving things aside people are pursuing it people are ordinary people somewhere i mean people like us still have organizations with us so we have the protection of a collective but rti has given birth to numbers of individuals madmen madcaps whatever you may call them people who who are not actually willing to listen to all the odds against them who don't accept it uh, who the other day there was some months ago uh, a dalit in rajasthan who asked questions of his sarpanch and his hands and legs were broken his legs were literally broken into almost pieces except they weren't cut they were and i called him within a few hours in the hospital where he was and he said main to nahi chhodunga main to wo suchna leke hi chalunga and several months later he came just now to a convention where we were in delhi uh, grievance redress and whistleblower protection convention where he had moved from his wheelchair to crutches and he came up armed with two papers saying maine maar khane ke baad bhi ye suchna nikali so that is the tenacity i think of the ordinary person and the hope that we have from ordinary people and now along with that hope also what we i think have to address because it's something that we've started to do in these years is that it is hope it is people's people's power it is people's energies but it's also a lot of hard work it's years and years and years of hard work it's not something that will come overnight or in one shot and it is also application of mind to the best ways to do certain things and so when the ncpri has approached this and there are amongst us i think we are all a community of activists in many ways and there are differences and i'll i'll place those differences that have come and the reasons for them and place them with the idea of let us all in all these areas no one is completely right or completely wrong but debate is very healthy and good for us managing to reach a better conclusion in many of these things so let us see and let's let's discuss and debate these so the ncpri 
in September 2010 in the NCPRI, there was general agreement between all those who we see today, not all those, the architects of those who we see in India against corruption, meaning Arvind and Prashant are also part of the NCPRI, still today part of the NCPRI working committee, and Aruna and me and several others. When the whistleblow, when people were being killed, we said we needed a strong whistleblower law. There was a very poor law at that time that had been placed in parliament. And more than that, we said we needed action. We needed to move from transparency to accountability. And there was, at that time, not in the public domain, but something we had got hold of, a very, very poor Lokpal bill that the government was, un which was under consideration. Both those, we said, let us amend these. But began an exercise out of that where, I'll tell you where the points of commonality are and the points of differences are, and then I'll briefly focus on this issue of grievances because that actually was our first point of difference. The points of commonality were that we all agreed, even as we expanded the scope of what was the initial exercise of protection of people and some removal of power of sanction for prosecution, sanction for investigation to a more comprehensive law, that we all agreed that no one should be above the law. That there was complete agreement of. We all agreed that actually um, there should be a situation where everyone has some recourse. It is not that you only have people who are activists who have recourse to the law, but everyone should have recourse. But where did some of the differences begin to come about? Some of us have had a lot of continue to have that actually from in all this situation a big problem has been the illegal and abuse of power, illegal use of power and the abuse of power. That's what's given rise to corruption. Hiding information and secrecy is also in, in essence an abuse of power. Someone has been given information which belongs to you and me and all of us and they are hiding it. So we have believed that the concentrations of power should be avoided as much as possible in the solutions. And RTI, that's why, was for us a great breakthrough, because it empowered everyone. It empowered the person using it, and it disempowered concentrations of power by taking away information from them and placing it in the hands of ordinary people. So we believe that you have to try and look in that direction. We believe that if we were creating an institution we would have to be very aware of the dangers of that institution also. Because the more power that we gave it, that adage of power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, holds true. It holds true of me, it holds true of you, it holds true of people sitting in places of power. So we need to be careful and need to look at why and how, what kinds of safeguards there would be. We need to have a system of checks and balances which is crucial in a democratic framework and set up. We did not believe that you should have one institution that holds over all the pillars of democracy, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, and that the separation of powers between the three serves a very useful purpose for all of us. We felt that. So we began to say that rather than a single institution, yes, everyone must have recourse and everyone must be held accountable. Can we not look for ways and means in which there may be multiple institutions that deal with separate kinds of problems and deal with them appropriately and deal with them better. So today the NCPRI, and I'll just give you a snapshot and we can later on talk about it in more detail, basically says that all those very same aims that are in the Jan Lokpal, do we agree with those aims, but we feel that they sh the method of dealing with them is, is, is we are suggesting differently. Number one, we are suggesting that there be a highly empowered Lokpal that deals with all the high-level government bureaucracy and the members of parliament or the legislature and the prime minister and the whole cabinet. We believe, which is 65,000 strong, roughly. And in that, that kind of corruption is primarily collaborative corruption where you have these deals being struck, whether it's 2G or whether it's Commonwealth Games or it's others or it's anything else at that high level or where land is being dished out for mining or for corporations. At the lower level, it is actually transactional corruption. It's the everyday bribe that a babu takes, that a policeman takes, that a talati, ta talati? talati takes. Yeah. All of them take uh, on the everyday transactional level 
which requires a different way of handling it. So we've suggested a Lokpal at the top with amendments, not the government Lokpal, that Lokpal with amendments. At the lower level, for the lower functionaries, we have suggested that you have an Up Lokpal as an appellate body because you're actually dealing with 45 lakh employees for central government and even in state governments, huge numbers of employees. So as an appellate body, not as a direct body, so that you can use the existing anti-corruption machinery and bureaucracy and have oversight, independent oversight by that Up Lokpal. We believe that for the judiciary, you should have a separate body under the Judicial Standards and Accountability Bill or National Judicial Commission with judges and non-judges, both within that body. But which will be a permanent body to look at judicial corruption because it's right quite of a different kind. The judicial corruption is not just the everyday taking of a bribe again or the taking of a bribe occasionally, but it is a whole lot of things dealing with standards, who their friends are, who they stay, who they stay with or don't stay with, how they decide stays and decisions. There are many, many things within that that are quite different from the executive and parliament that comes together for corruption. We believe that there should grievances, and this has been a big problem, actually, big issue of difference. All our work, Aruna and my work, has been done with grassroots level organizations for 25 years. So we may not actually be very good at investigating a 2G scam. Prashant is much better, and we would go to him. But we know the everyday dealing of, of a panchayat office, and the BDO office, and the Tesseldar's office, and we know what grievances means. And we know it's as vital as the big corruption, but how different it is from that big corruption. So we are suggesting and learning from the RTI Act a completely new grievance address bill. We'd be happy to send it to all of you for critiquing and for looking at and for suggestions. Where we say at a district level, every district in the country should have a grievance redress commissioner who, like the RTI commissioner at the state level, oversees every department. So first, the department should be asked to sort out grievances within one month. And if they do not sort out, then the grievance redress commissioner should have the powers to levy a penalty and give compensation within one month. And so that your questions are sorted out at a decentralized level and that you have bodies like we are suggesting in every block, there should be a people support center because we've seen in social audits and public audits how much you need a new institution of supporting people. The ordinary person in Rajasthan doesn't know how to read and write. They need help with it. They need help to be able to track their grievance. They need help at various points. So a grievance redress mechanism actually needs four or five institutions, which I'll briefly just now mention. And finally, we believe that for the protection of people, that question that began right at the beginning, we need a strong whistleblower protection law that protects not just people in offices, but also the ordinary RTI user who actually takes things out of the office and brings it in public domain. Not just the person who is raising financial corruption, but also the person who is raising issues of injustice. That we feel the problem with the Lokpal is, the Jan Lokpal vision is that it is too many things placed on one body, too many requirements placed on one body. It's too much of a burden from top to bottom, from prime minister to peon, as I say, too big in a country like India, too empowered in that it's that power can be misused, not just at the top level, but the delegated powers of that Lokpal having that Lokpal in every